Hello everyone, I wanted to come to you with a Start Your Day Off Right series video for Tuesday, June 22nd, 20, 2021. Uh, my quote is, trust is like an eraser, it gets smaller and smaller after every mistake. My story is John Blanchard stood up from the bench, straightened his army uniform and studied the crowd of people making their way through Grand Central Station. He looked for the girl whose heart he knew, but whose face he didn't, the girl with the rose. His interest in her had begun 13 months before in a, in a Florida library. Taking a book off the shelf, he found himself intrigued, not with the words of the book, but with the notes penciled in the margin. The soft handwriting reflected a thoughtful soul and insightful mind. In front of the book, he discovered the previous owner's name, Miss Hollis Maynell. With time and effort, he located her address. She lived in New York City. He wrote her a letter introducing himself and invited her to correspond. The next day, he was shipped overseas for service in World War II. During the next year and one month, the two grew to know each other through the mail. Each letter was a seed falling on a fertile heart. A romance was budding. Blanchard received a photograph, but she re Blanchard requested a photograph, but she refused. She felt if he really cared, it wouldn't matter what she looked like. When the day finally came for him to return from Europe, they scheduled their first meeting. 7 p.m. at the Grand Station, Grand Central Station in New York. You'll recognize me, she wrote, by the red rose I'll be wearing on my lapel. So at 7 o'clock, he was in the station looking for a girl whose heart he loved, but whose face he had never seen. I'll, tell, I'll let Mr. Blanchard tell you what happened. A young woman was coming towards me, her figure long and slim, her blonde hair laid back in curls from her delicate ears. Her eyes were blue as flowers, her lips were and chin had a gentle firmness, and in her pale green suit she was like a springtime come alive. I started towards her, entirely forgetting to notice that she was not wearing a rose. As I moved, a small provocative smile curved her lips. Going my way, sailor, she murmured, almost uncontrollably, I made one step closer to her, and then I saw Hollis Maynell. She was standing almost directly behind this girl. A woman well past 40, she had grand hair tucked under a warm hat. She was more than plump, her thick ankled feet thrust in her low heel shoes. The girl in the green suit was walking quickly away. I felt though I was split in two. So keen was my desire to follow her, and yet so deep was my longing for the woman whose spirit had truly companioned me and upheld my own. And there she stood, her pale, plump face was lovely and sensible. Her gray eyes had a warm and kindly twinkle. I did not hesitate. My fingers gripped the small, worn leather copy of the books that was to identify me to her. There would not be love. It would be something precious, something perhaps even better than love, a friendship for which I must be, ever be grateful. I squared my shoulders and saluted and held out the book for the woman, even though, while I spoke, choked by the bitterness of my disappointment, I'm Lieutenant Bl John Blanchard, and you must be Miss Maynell. I'm so glad that we could meet. May I take you to dinner? The woman's face broadened into a tolerant smile. I don't know what this is about, son, she answered, but the young lady in the green suit who just went by, she begged me to wear this rose on my coat, and she said if you were to ask me to out to dinner, I should tell you that she's waiting for you in the big restaurant across the street. She said it was some kind of test. It's not difficult to understand and admire Miss Maynell's wisdom. The true Nature of heart is seen in its response to the unattractive. Tell me whom you love, and I will tell you who you are. My scripture today is Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. May God bless you.